let's get to the 18th Semiosis 101 episode on General Persian Semiotic Theory for Illustrators and Designers. This week, in around 10 minutes, we will end this month on Persian philosophy in the context of semiosis and visual communication design with Peirce's final philosophical category of experience, thirdness. Peirce defines thirdness, that which is as it is, as medius between two others. Eh? Again, with Peirce's problematic language. Okay, this is why I make these videos for you, illustrators and designers, to translate Pierce's obscure terms and turn of phrases into designer-centric language. These Semiosis 101 videos aim to clarify Pierce's great ideas, which have great value to designers and illustrators, if only Pierce's language was clearer. In this video, we cut through Pierce's torturous phrasing to explore the idea of a philosophical mediation between an audience's quality of experience and the relations in our visuals to what they know. The philosophical category of thirdness is a state in which symbols work, in which logos and other outputs of visual communication operate in. Want to know more? Well, keep watching and subscribe. Hit the bell. Thirdness. Hi, welcome to this week's talk. So we're finishing off the the month, or just over a month, on the phenomenological roots underpinning how Persian semiotic theory, the sign action of that theory, operates. So first week we talked about firstness, the week after that, secondness, and now we're at the, the highest level, which is thirdness. And we, again, we're using C.S. Peirce Speaks tweets as a way of getting Peirce's theory here in front of us so that from a designer centric point of view, Semiosis 101 can unpack Peirce's quite complex language into what is really use, useful for designers and illustrators. So in this tweet that Peirce starts to describe his three levels of phenomenological experience of how we have semiotic action, sign action working. He says, in the ideas of firstness, secondness, and thirdness, the three elements or universal categories appear under their forms of firstness. So we start off with firstness. And from our perspective as creative, the level of firstness is the moment where people, our audience, perceive something, some piece of visual language where they actually start to think of it as more than just the obvious. Then at the second level, secondness, that is the point where once we've got their attention, once we've hooked them in, then the secondness is relative to things that are out there like your index finger, pointing to relative things in the real world. Now, they might be ideas, they may be physical things, they might be places, they might be people or whatever. Now, the third level, which is what we're going to be talking about today, is the mediation between those two states. This isn't a state that they're aware of, but it's that thing of being not aware to them being aware. And then from being aware to resemblances, those resemblances start to connect with our audience. By connecting with our audience, they're perceiving visual language that we put together as illustration designers as elements that this is more than what we're just looking at here. There's something connotatively happening here. What does this mean? This reminds me of that, that resembles something I know. And we, as designers and illustrators, can use that visual language to hook and build on. And that's where semiosis comes in, the sign action, because we're moving up to relative, pointing to existing things. But then at the third level, we mediate them. What do we mean by that? So moving forward. Again, Pierce says, the third is that which is what is owing to things between which it mediates and which it brings into relation to each other. Mm hmm. That's a lot of words. What is he trying to say here? 
This is the third or mediating element between chance, which brings forth first and original events, and law, which produces sequences or seconds. Come on, Pierce, what are you trying to say here? Just spell it out to us. What does this mean? Say what you mean, Pierce. The mediating element between chance and that brings forth the fear. So if you think about what I said before, there's a moment when somebody is not aware and then all of a sudden they perceive there's something happening in the visual language that hooks them in, that this is more than what's a passing fancy. So you've got their attention. At that level of fierceness, there's meaning. And that level of fierceness, that's where you get iconic representation, where it's resemblances, it it feels like something that you're aware of, but it has no direct meaning other than it could be. It's a possibility of to the secondness where there it's that. And it points you to something. So it's a sign where you have something there that actually represents a bigger idea. And that idea is existent in the world. So you got an idea that something else is there. So let's move forward to the next slide and just simplify down really what Pierce is saying in those quotes that are within those tweets. The take home here is thirdness, the third, the third level of phenomenological experience. What we mean by that is the phenomena of experience. The third state is a mediation state. It mediates it has relation to other things, to each other. So it's building on iconic and indexical to move us to somewhere where when we say this, we actually mean that definitely. But this doesn't necessarily have a direct connection to that, like say the indexical level is. It contains indexical, but indexical, it's more about pointing to things that are that thing. And at this level, it's now saying, when we see this, it means that. Think of any logo. Any logo is at this level of thirdness of mediation because all the elements that make up that logo is mediated by the audience and the, uh, the, the branded company to say, when you see this, the white swoosh on a red background, it means Coca-Cola or five colored rings together means the Olympics or whatever, or whatever. That is mediated that we come to accept that when we see that, it is this. And when we see this, it is now that. So then when we think of the thirdness and the sense of mediating, it includes the other two levels because it's mediating between the, the starting point where things are there and we get a sense of resemblance to the next level where we get something that it is that this is that to the third level where when we say this it means that so what we're talking about here is essentially from our audience point of view if you remember the determination flow we've covered that in previous talks the determination flow what we have is the concept Pierce calls this the object, but the concept to be communicated, visually communicated. From that concept, it passes through the designer or the illustrator, the visual communicator, for them to de define the, the representation, the appropriate representation of that concept through their aesthetic, through the visual language that they use in their design or illustration. And from there, that should lead to a successful interpretation by our audience and that audience then through what they are looking at connects back to the concept they understand the concept and thirdness it is the relationship between all of these elements coming together the iconic and the indexical working as sign action powerful sign action semiosis semiosis is another way for sign action into something that when we see this, it becomes a law that these people who are our audience will go, ah, we see this in this particular order, in this particular color, in this particular way. We know that means whatever, organization, product, whatever it is. We know what that means that. 
the obvious ones, as it keeps saying, Coca-Cola, Nike, these are the ones we can see on our mind's eye straight away. They are made up of iconic levels of things that when it comes to the symbolic level, which we're talking about here, because the symbolic level of representation is within the state of thirdness, it works because the audience has gone with us and accepted when they see this, it means that now. We accept it means that now. That is our law. That's the argument we're making, that when we see this, it now means that. So let's move forward. So what we have here, again, is the fact that within the state of thirdness, so the third, the state of thirdness, this is a state of our being where we are at a level where we are processing things, we're mediating things that we know when we see certain things together in a particular way, it's got a bigger meaning. So symbolic signs, Pierce says, a genuine symbol is a symbol that has general meaning. So we are talking about a general rule here, a general law, general argument, that when we see particular things in a particular way, in a particular cultural um, setting, context, we know that that is meaning this, and generally we agree that. So a symbol, once in being, spreads among the peoples in use and in experience. Its meaning grows. So think about a symbol, and we're using the word symbol in a Persian context here. The word symbol in English language is used in many different ways, in different contexts for different things. But here, what we're talking about within a symbol is a level of semiotic communication that is generally agreed that when we see it this way, it means that. And for that to actually have its meaning, that meaning needs to be shared. So just think of any like successful brand that you become aware of the brand, even if you've never bought the brand or used the brand, you become aware of the brand because meaning has grown might be through social media, might be through word of mouth, might be through different ways, but the meaning has grown. So a symbol is a sign which refers to the concept, person calls that the object, that it denotes by virtue of a law, usually as an association of general ideas, which operates to cause the symbol to be interpreted as referring to that concept, to that original object. So this is about the, the, the full circle of semiotic sign action that at this level, it takes people back to the concept, it connects with the concept in a general way, a generally agreed way, and that's how logos work. And this is at this higher level of a symbolic level. Okay, so let's just finish off, moving forward to a take-home piece, a bite-sized take-home piece. And this week's bite-sized piece of applicable semiotic knowledge is during your development, when trying to solve a problem, of what visual elements can you combine to visually communicate a complex concept, e.g. logo design, branding, emblems, etc., whatever it is. Consider not only what general visual elements are familiar to your intended target audience, but also the audience's interpretation of what they see is mediated by a general combination of the visually familiar connected to the things they already know. That's thirdness in sign action. OK, so just to quickly complete this and, and unpack this, that the mediation is tied in to audience interpretation. Audience interpretation is controlled by the designer and, and illustrators visual language that they choose to represent the ideas that they want. But at the highest level within thirdness, this is generally agreed by your target audience that when they see this, it means that. So it's like a shorthand to a huge concept. You know, an organization is a huge concept to get across in a very simple, you know, just few marks. So thirdness in sign action is that level where people are familiar enough with what they're seeing to actually say, ah, this is now that. So that is our 10 minutes of Percy and Semiosis 101 for this week. Thirdness. Pierce's highest phenomenological state identified with a sense of action and reaction in our audience. 
the aspect of experience where we know one thing is relative to something else. Thirdness, a phenomenological state of being, identified with the sense of learning or mediation as in thought or semiosis. If firstness is the state in which qualities, resemblances and feelings direct our audience's interpretation and begins the semiotic journey of semiosis, then illustrators and designers' iconic representation exists in the state of firstness. If secondness is the state in which illustrators and designers can manipulate the indexical level of representation to our audience, then we can craft our visual language to provoke action or reaction in the audience in this second state. We can make our audience see that connotatively, one visual element we show is indeed relative to something else, pointing the audience to make more complex connections in their interpretation or reading of what we visually communicate. Now, in thirdness, as designers and illustrators, we see that through semiosis, sign action, our work can communicate at the symbolic level with our target audience through their own learning or mediation. That when they see visuals comprising of A, B or C, it is agreed that that combination of elements means Z. Let's quickly unpack that. The state of thirdness is when our target audience realizes that ABC means Z, or a logo comprising of five colored interlocking rings means the Olympic Games, or a swoosh means Nike, or, or, you get the picture. Color circles or a splodge are iconic representations that in a state of fierceness, our audience may recognize as circles or a swoosh shape. It is during a state of secondness that indexically the same shapes may cause a reaction in the audience to see a ring rather than a circle or a swoosh rather than a splodge, thus causing a reaction to relate one thing with another. But it is the highest state that our audience will agree, social, culturally, that when we see five colour rings together in a particular shape and order, then that means the Olympics. Or when the audience sees a certain swoosh shape, it means the Nike brand. It is within this highest phenomenological state that symbolic representation works. Symbols are crafted from iconic elements, but the actual agreed interpretation can only happen if the intended audience reaches the state of thirdness. All this, of course, works at subconscious phenomenological levels of human existence. But once designers and illustrators realize the pervasive power you have that semiosis opens up for you, then you can begin to visually communicate at more effective levels to hook and connect with your audiences. Come back next Wednesday when we will move the semiosis conversation further toward focusing on designing and illustrating for our audience by embracing the conscious crafting of the sign action. Hit subscribe and the bell to make some noise for the next video. Hi, if you've watched these videos before, you probably know by now, I'm Dave Wood, a design educator and researcher a published design author and have worked commercially as both a freelance illustrator and graphic designer. The guy behind the theory, Charles Sanders Peirce, was a philosopher, a mathematician, and a theorist, but he wasn't a creative. Each week on this Scout Scott Semiosis 101 YouTube channel, I'll post at least one 10 minute explainer video on an aspect of Peirce's pragmatic semiotic theory. Each free Semiosis 101 10 minute video will use designer centric terms instead of theoretical language so that illustrators and graphic designers can understand and follow. Each video will feature a take home piece of applicable semiotic theory and they do interconnect to build up your understanding of semiosis. But this channel is not a course in semiotics per se. Instead, each video is a, a bite sized illustrated piece of new knowledge on sign action or semiosis as Peirce names it. The aim of these three videos is to take Peirce's quite complex philosophical theoretical language and put it in the context of designing visual communication, whether these are illustrations, motion, branding, packaging, editorial, etc. By subscribing to this Scouse Scott Semiosis 101 YouTube channel, 
you will learn how Pierce's pragmatic semiotic theory of semiosis can help to enhance and improve how you visually communicate. I have many more Pearsian semiotic topics to discuss, but I'd be interested in hearing about your semiotic ideas. Add a comment below. If you like this video, check out my other semiotic videos and consider liking and sharing those videos with others. The more we creators discuss semiotic theory, the easier its application into our creative processes will be. As a fellow creator and a published design author, I have a link in the description to my Scout Scott website where you can find all the Semiosis 101 videos and read background info on the blog. You can download free Semiosis 101 video transcripts and reading lists. You can buy illustrated and typographical gift ranges on my Redbubble shop. You can also buy my 2014 design book published by Bloomsbury Publishing, Interface Design and Introduction to Visual Communication in UI Design. Over the years, I've collaborated with other design academic researchers and Persian semioticians to develop a designer-centric explanation of Pierce's theoretical language. If you are interested in reading my semiotic Rosetta Stone academic writing, then you can visit my academia.edu link in the description. Any other books on Persian semiotics or design I've mentioned in the videos are also listed in the description. Check them out too. Thanks for watching. Check out the other videos, like and share them with your friends, and hit the bell and subscribe buttons to be notified when next week's video is published. You can also follow Semiosis 101 on the socials for updates. It's Scouse underscore Scott on Instagram and Semiosis 101 on Twitter. See you all again next week for more Semiosis 101 to help illustrators and designers to enhance your visual communication skills.